Morning, morning, morning. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to Love 500. Welcome back to this one. <sighs> got a lot to do on this. We're waiting for the air con pipes to come. We've got a new battery that needs to come. We've got a, we're got. we also waiting for the ignition barrel to come or the, the plastic bit to come so we can get it started, get the air con pipes in, get it moved and then ready to carry on. But we've got other cars to do first. So this has got to be parked up for a few days or possibly weeks until such time uh, as we can get on it. But we need to get it moving. So let's get on with it. Let's get straight into it. Got a lot to do. First of all, got to move the cars around. So let's do it. Let's get into it. Let's go. Time to fill it. Really feel like I'm making progress now, filling the radiator. Right. That'll do. Right, let's get the bleed screw back in. And that's that. So that's all the uh, pipe work done up. Radiator's all plugged in, as we know, the power that is. Washer fluid was already full, but we'll top that up. Um, we've just got to do now See if we can get this horn wired. So we'll do that. Right, as soon as we've got to change this, I thought we might as well do it now. And then what we can do is take the back off of it and then the rest of it we can just throw away. So let's get this off quickly. Right, 
Right, that's that done. And then what we'll do is we'll just take off the back part and um, throw the rest of it away. No point in keeping the rest. Or could we keep it for an emergency? No. Actually, you know what? Until we, until I need that, I might as well because if we ca if we had one that was completely disintegrated and we wanted to drive it, we could at least put that on as a spare, couldn't we? So I will hold on to it for the time being, rather than taking it apart. Number plates have arrived. I'm not going to bother putting those on just yet. Just thought I'd quickly do that to get that changed. That's it. That's that done. Right, welcome back. Um, it's a couple of days has passed. Um, I'm still waiting for parts to come, unfortunately. The only thing we've got is the lock set down there, which I may not need, uh, and, a, and a little badge for the R bath. Um, but so far, nothing else has come for this yet. Now, I'm, ex I'm hoping, I'm ex sort of expecting the aircon pipe to come today. According to the tracking information, it's on its way to the courier. So hopefully that means it's gonna come today. Uh, and when that comes, obviously we can fit that uh, fit the other pipe that we've already got and then put the, body, the throttle body back on, put the battery back in and we'll be ready for the new ignition then. Um, I don't think that's going to come until possibly tomorrow, which is a shame, tomorrow being Saturday. Um, so normally I don't work on the cars on the weekend, but I will probably do that over the weekend. It won't take long anyway to try it because um, there, there is potentially an issue. Now, when you see this video, I'm not sure which, whether you're going to be seeing this next Wednesday or next Sunday, not sure yet. Um, but you haven't yet seen the first day. By the, time, by the time you see this, you would have seen the first day, because this is the second day. Um, someone did point out on the walk around video, and they may well be right, um, that, in fact, a couple of people pointed out, I think, is that whoever stole this car, the fact that the OBD cover was removed, although they always seem to have the OBD covers removed, um, that it may be the fact that they have programmed out the existing key and programmed their own key or immobiliser stroke key, which, it, which is possibility, in which case when I put a new, when I put the existing lock, assuming that lock works um, and use a new, uh, use the existing key that comes with the car, the immobiliser won't recognise the key. That is a distinct possibility, and that did happen in the last stolen recovered car I had, which I can't remember which one it was. Was that? Can't remember. Can't remember which one it was. It was a little while ago, back in the winter. It was one of the white ones. Can't remember which one. And I had to get Roy the locksmith down, who had to pro cut and program some new keys, or well, a new key, uh, and then it fired into life. Um, that might have been the, the, can't remember the name of the car, but I think that might have been the facelift one. Um, but, it's not necessarily the case and of course I won't know until I turn the key so I've got to try this method first because if I don't have to get new keys done or stroke a new immobiliser uh, so a new chip done then I won't obviously um, so as soon as that lock barrel comes we'll swap that over all the other aircon pipes and everything will be done so engine wise it'll be ready to go um, we'll put that in plug it in Turn the key, see what happens. Well, it's turned it into a really warm day. Um, okay, so aircon pipes have just arrived uh, and also arrived from our friends at Club 500 is a new ignition switch. So that bit in there is all part of that. So I reckon that other one was broken. So hopefully, what we're hoping is that goes in with the existing ignition barrel and it then starts. As we mentioned earlier, if the thieves have, re have reprogrammed a key and blocked out the key that was the key that the, the, the original key with the car, which I ha now have, it won't start and we will get the, we should get the padlock symbol up because it's not recognizing the immobilizer or not recognizing the chip. As I say, we won't know that until we get it in. So now we've got it. I am going to put that in first now. Um, and then I'm going to come and do the aircon pipes and then we can put a battery in. Once I've done the aircon pipes, we can put battery in and uh, hopefully we'll try it. Fingers crossed. So let's, um, yeah, let's get in, uh, in the car and get this installed. Hopefully the right way. Helps. All right, 
that's that. Now that bit will clip over there. The all important ring. <clears throat> okay, let's get it on. Let's get it on. I'm hoping and praying that this is gonna work. And then within the next half an hour, even less than that, we can potentially get this started. Of course, I just remembered, um, of course I can't start the car because I've got no throttle body on there at the moment. Um, so I've got to get those aircon pipes on. So I'm gonna unpack those aircon pipes. We'll get those on first, then we can put the throttle body on, then put a battery in and then attempt to start it. So let me just set you up on time-lapse. Uh, we'll get these aircon pipes out. Uh, I'm gonna take the bumper off obviously to do that. Um, yeah, bear with me, we'll be back. Absolute nightmare. I could not get that straight. So if I got it on the nut, on the stud, the actual thing that goes into the like the hole with the bush on, you know, for the pipe work, just wasn't lined up. You had to sort of pull the pipe upwards. So see, I wasn't sure if I was rooting it correctly. It's still not in the connectors properly. Um, it's in that one, and it's in that one, and it's in the correct place down here. To plug in that's the main thing but what a nightmare so all i hope is that's sealed properly i've shone a, i've got down there as close as i can and shone a torch down there and it looks as if it's seated correctly and it's done the nuts done up now i've got to do the other one i think the other one will be easier oh, what a mare I, I am itching to get this thing or at least attempt to get this thing started absolutely itching to get it done but i need to have some lunch i'm hungry and it's really hot <laughs> i'm not complaining i'm not complaining about it being hot because it's normally freezing so yeah i'm just going to go have some lunch and then we'll come back and we'll do the other pipe I just need to plug it in uh, and push all the cables and pipes in. Um, did I show you how terribly rusty that was? I, um, I put some uh, stone chip on it. I uh, gave it a, a wire brushing on the drill and then I put stone chip on it so it looks much, much nicer now. So we're not too worried about that anyway at the moment because we're not even, we don't even know whether it's gonna start. And I've got a dead battery, as I say, I've got a, I say a dead battery, a discharged battery. Um, and I don't really know whether that combined with a power pack will be sufficient. But hopefully it will. 
but I'm not sure whether that will be sufficient to um, get it started, if it's going to start. Of course, we don't even know whether it's going to start. So I'm just putting all the petrol pipes and everything back into where they should be. Uh, what's one missing there? What's... Oh, maybe it doesn't have it on this car in particular. Right, so the wires are in. So I'm going to try and put that battery in and give it a whirl and see what happens. Right, so that's better. Put that on properly now. So I know that I'm not even going to try and start it with um, just the battery because I know that battery has got zero power in it. So I'm going to try it with a jump pack. See if it turns over. Okay. Again, we don't even know whether this is going to start even. But I'm going to turn it turn it over at least, or try to. Pardon me. Um, and if that doesn't work, then we'll take the battery out of the R bath temporarily. Right. Let's um, connect this up. Earth. Live. And we turn this on. The good old top don. Cracking bit of kit this top don. Wedge that in there. Got three quarters charge in this. Give it a boost. Right, let's try it. Not sure the boost came on then. Uh, I haven't got the keys. Where are the keys? Might be in the ignition. Yeah, they are. Right, let's try it. Oh, we've got power. Let's try it. Yes, yes, it starts. She runs, she lives. Oh yes. Oh, that is fantastic. That is bloody fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. I really was thinking that's probably not gonna work, but it has. I'll leave that running for a bit. Oh, that's marvelous. Absolutely marvellous. Yes. I'm well pleased. Absolutely over the moon. Over the moon. Wonder how long it is since it ran. So whoever stole it did not program out the original key. And I don't need that lock set wherever it is. It's in the car. So the lock set I bought for £125, I will either stick that back up on eBay, uh, or I'll just keep it for the next car. Fantastic. So we need to ble bleed the radiator. Uh, I think we'll, what we will do is get this air filter back on. We've already changed the air filter. Uh, we'll get the box back on. In fact, I'm going to stop the engine now. now I'm going to leave it running just a little bit. Oh, what? I am so pleased. So please, because this means I can get this in front of the house now. We can get the old bath back here and get the seats cleaned. Wonderful. Don't appear to have any leaks, which is always a bonus. Coolant leaks I was talking about. Someone was saying they thought the uh, O2 sensor cable was was uh, cut. I don't, know what, I don't know what made them think that. I don't know what they were looking at. Sounds sweet, doesn't it? I've got to do the cam bill on this. <laughs> scary, scary. Oh, I'm over the moon. Absolutely over the moon with that. Well pleased. Right, let's. Uh, I'm going to stop the engine. I'm just going to whack that uh, air filter back on, get it all uh, plugged back in again. And um, I've got the new headlight as well. I've got a box down there which I'm not quite sure what it is. <laughs> no, that's going to be the headlight. So the aircon pipes, I'll put those on, obviously. We know that. Um, got to connect them up. And I have got a bolt. But I don't know what that is. <laughs> I ordered so many parts, that's the trouble. Ah, oh, oh no, I was gonna say it could be the parcel shelf, but unless they've folded it in half and then half again, it's not that. Right, that's all that back on with the new air filter in, which I put in the other day, as you saw. Um, just unpack the new headlight. I'm assuming they put all that yellow crap over it so they can identify it as being theirs. Oh, this came off of an Arbath 2014. Right, so, <clears throat> let's um, put this on.
Right, I've found the aircon bolt and I've put that on. So that's all fitted now, nice and tight. Um, when I said earlier that the pipes were in the wrong place, I couldn't get the pipes in, that's because it's the other pipe that went into that, not the thin one. I thought it was the thin one, but it's not. So I think I just need to put that one in there. Um, I think that's correct as that is. It looks quite high, doesn't it? I'm, I haven't got anything to, to go by. I haven't got another car, but with, with aircon, because the, the other car I've got is a pop. And of course I've got three cars at the moment. One's being, a, one's a pop, one's this, and one's um, an Arbath, which is obviously different. So I've got nothing to compare it with, which is a bit of a nuisance, but um, I don't know. It just looks as if it's a bit high, but I'm probably wrong. So hopefully they're all done up tight and they're not going to leak. That was the one. That was the one that was the pain. I don't want to rush to have to do that again in the future. So I have glued those bits back on and the glue's gone off, but I am not going to put, so it's these bits here. But also I was going to put the everything back on, but what I would want to do is um, before I do that, I want to know that that speedo's okay. Um, so tonight I'll come out here and I'll start it up and I'll do the old indicators and what have you and make sure that that's not an issue because if it is it always come off again not the steering wheel but you have to take the uh, you know to get to the screws to get the speedo out you really need to get the top cowling off to get the top cowling off you need to get the bottom cowling off so I thought what's the point in putting it all on if I potentially might have to take it off again so um, I'm going to leave it for the time being um, I have just connected the battery. As I say, I don't think there's any power in it as such. But the stereo does power up. I just wanted to see. Or has it gone off again? No, it's gone off again. Yeah, power. <laughs> the power is so low. I can see the the light. Uh, I need to get the jump pack back on it again. I want to see if I've got free CD because I've not had power before. I also need to order some batteries, don't I? I think I need to order a couple of batteries. One battery for this and... Um, is it the old bath I need to order a battery for? You know what? Oh, God, I've just lost track now. Um, can't remember. But I have got one on charge, so it might be okay. So I'm not necessarily... I don't necessarily need one, but I think I'll order one anyway. Even if I don't need it now, I'll need it at some point in the future. So, yeah, so I'm going to start it up. I'm going to bleed the radiator. And what we'll do is I say, we'll, we'll, we'll check this tonight and then we'll come out either tomorrow or Sunday. Uh, right, it's... Uh, it's about half past nine now, so it's not, it's not dark dark, but it's dark enough. As you can see, it's quite dark. My lights are on on my garage, but it is still, still a bit of light, but it's, uh, it's dark enough to be able to see whether this is faulty or not. So if we switch this on, actually, should we try and start the engine? I'm not sure it'll start. No, I didn't think, didn't think it would. We have got some power there. No, it's not even enough. There's not even enough power in it to um, to display that. So I'll have to, um, what shall I do? I'll have to put the jump pack on it just to do it. I want to check it now so I can put all this back on tomorrow. So let me just um, stick the jump pack on it and um, then we'll try again. Right, jump pack's on it now. Now we'll start the engine up and we want to see when we indicate if there's any dodgy lights up and there's not. So it's all good. It never does it on the left hand one anyway. Airbag failure, that's because there's the wire there. <laughs> yeah, it's good, it's all good. That is brilliant. Good, so tomorrow, let's turn that back off. Tomorrow we can get all this back on. Brilliant. Right, it's the next day and uh, <laughs> the battery is completely dead again because we know that's a dead battery anyway. Um, got the locking wheel nut key has come today. Uh, from eBay, I got it from the uh, eBay user VW base. Um, luckily I had the card so I knew what the shape was and it was a number 275 so they were advertising 275s so I bought one. It was uh, 24.95 so unfortunately 25 quid that you don't really want to spend but I had to um, and it came this morning so that was good so I've tested it it's the right one um, so now we can get the wheels off of this when we need to. So yesterday I've ordered, uh, last night I ordered two new batteries from Tainar, T-A-Y-N-A, .co.uk. Batteries have gone up 
it seems. I did look at uh, GSF and I also looked at um, Car Parts for Less and Tana were at least £30 cheaper per battery. Um, delivery was, uh, they, they charged per, per, per battery delivery unfortunately, so it was £10 something delivery rather than just a one fee, which is a bit annoying. But um, the battery itself, including the VAT, was £101 and I think the last time I bought one they were £86, so they've gone up quite a lot of money, but then as in everything. Um, but they are the same battery on GSF and on Car Parts for Less were at least, as I say, £30 more expensive. So I bought two, one for this and one for the R Bath, I think it is, that I need the new one for. Uh, but yeah, or is it, is it for um, Project Foxy? I can't remember. One of them's got a good one in, I can't remember which. But yeah, two batteries on the way. Uh, they'll probably come Monday or Tuesday, I expect. So let's get on, let's, uh, let's get the steering wheel on and get the uh, airbag on and so on, and then we can start it up, get it moved and get the R Bath back down here, let's do it. the uh, steering wheel put on. You may have seen me on time lapse, so I had to take it off again. That was because all of a sudden I could see, oh, where's the horn button? The horn button, the horn's wire, sorry, not button, the horn wire disappeared and it was trapped behind the steering wheel, so I'd take it off, thread all it through and refit it. So that's all done now. Um, so what I was looking at this last night, I was sitting on my little bench in there having a beer and I thought, you know what, this, this bumper is a decent bumper apart from that. So I thought I might have another little go at this and try and push this out and maybe sand that down, fill it if necessary, and with that bit, and then whack some paint over it. Because this is, this is a decent bumper. And it'll save me paint in another one, the cost as well of a new bumper. So I'm gonna go at it and see, see how it goes. So I thought for now, I'm gonna put the DRLs in and I'll put the number plate on the front. And that way, I can, you know, move it around a bit more. Right, uh, a few days has passed. Uh, I've just been out in the road to uh, install the new battery. Um, old one was completely flat as a pancake. So I think, as I say, I think this is a decent battery. It starts up using the jump pack. I think it's a decent battery. Oh, that's interesting. I've put it on to charge literally five minutes ago. Sorry, the sun's on it, it's a bit difficult to see, but it looks like it's already on green. That's rather strange, considering the battery is completely flat. Hmm, interesting. We'll, we'll leave that until it finishes, until it goes just green, because it's got all three reds and the green on at the moment. I don't think you can see it where it's in the sun. Um, yeah, it's literally been on five minutes. So I'm a bit puzzled why it's doing that. Once it, when, it, when it's gone just to green, I will, um, I'll get the battery tester on it. The old top on battery tester on it. That'll tell me whether it's cream crackered or not. Strange. Um, so yeah, so new battery in. Uh, I've got to put the bolt in, just to bolt it down. Nice new X-side battery from um, Tainar. Tainar definitely seems to be the cheapest place to get batteries. So this, this, they have gone up. It is 101 pounds now plus. Uh, five pound summit delivery. I did buy two, um, and you pay. Unfortunately, I think I mentioned it on another video, or um, that you, you. Unfortunately, the way their system works is you pay delivery per battery, not per order. Um, so I paid sort of ten pounds something for delivery, and the two came together. But they are much cheaper than anybody else. At least thirty quid cheaper for that same battery um, than anybody else that I could find. Um, and I know a lot of you have said that you, you use Tainer because it's next day delivery. All right, you don't get free next day delivery, but they do come next day. And they are the cheapest, so what's not to like? As you may have gathered, parcel shelf. It's got a customs declaration on it. I'm assuming it came from the Channel Islands or something. Um, it took a little while to arrive, that's presumably why. Uh, so we'll get that on. Um, we're not doing any more on this at present, uh, cause it's, because it's insured, etc., etc., 
uh, and I've got a dentist appointment today. I'm going to take it to the dentist because <laughs> it's limited parking. So I'll give it a good run as well. Um, it's only a couple of miles down the road, but uh, I'll give it a bit of a run. Just see what it's like. It is all roadworthy and so on. Um, obviously the aircon needs to be regassed and hopefully it won't leak. We've got to clean the seats, um, service it. I'm going to do the cam belt on it. Um, so there's not an awful lot more to do on it. It was hopefully going to be a pretty quick turnaround really. There's no dents on it are there from memory. I think we've got good tyres all round so we shouldn't need any tyres. Um, I've got new number plates, haven't I? They've already come. I think I've put one on, haven't I? Yeah, I've got, I've got the front one on here. Still, still in two minds about this bumper. I don't know what to do about this. I might have a go at it. I don't know. Really don't, I can't decide. I think, actually, you know what I think I'll do? I'm going to paint that white bumper. The, sorry, I'm going to paint that new bumper that I've got, the pop one, paint that white, see how it comes out, colour-wise, because there's always a danger of it coming out too white. I'll do that first, because it would be nice to have a nice new bumper on it. I know it's a pop bumper, but we can just um, bond those on. I've got some even without where they've been filed off, so I can just bond those on. I've done it many times in the past. It works just fine. Um, see what it looks like. If the colour and everything matches OK or is acceptable, then we'll use it. Uh, failing that, we'll have, a, we'll have a go. I would like to have a go at trying to repair this, but oh, I don't know. I don't think it's going to be good enough. We'll see, we'll see. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll get this back shelf on. Uh, we'll take it out for a run and then I'll report back later on when I get back. I just remembered I'm going to take it out in a minute actually because I need to go down to Halfords and, and get some um, exhaust paste for this. Uh, yeah, so I'll report back as soon as I get back from Halfords and uh, let you know what it's like. You know, running wise, I'm just going to tighten up because we haven't got the side bolts in. So I'm just going to tighten up these two at the front here. Oh, it's tight, they are tight, yeah. So just to make sure the bumper's not going to fall off as we're going along. Um, and then, yeah, we report back as soon as we get back from Halfords, let you know how it runs. Should be fine, shouldn't it? Can't see why it wouldn't. Right, welcome back. The car has been parked for probably a couple of weeks out on the road. I had it parked up there, and then I decided after, probably more than a couple of weeks actually, I decided around two weeks afterwards that I'd move it, just to move it around a little bit. Um, got a brand new battery in it. Now I parked it up there, I don't know how long it was there for. Certainly approaching two weeks, if not two weeks. Started it, moved it, fine. It's been over there, probably getting on for two weeks again actually. Uh, it's amazing how time flies. Uh, I went out this morning to move it. Battery, dead as a doornail. Absolute dead as a doornail, it's a brand new battery in that. Now, when I moved it, or when it was on the drive and I moved it away and so on, uh, we had flashing mileage. Um, so I blew a mees knackered. Might just be a proxy alignment, might be all right. I reckon I've got a parasitic drain. Don't think I've ever actually had that before. It's quite a common fault. I don't think I personally have ever had it on a car before. Might not be that, of course, could be something else, but brand spanking new battery. So I'm gonna get my jump pack out and uh, see if I can get it started off that and just move it again. I just wanna move it further up here in front of my um, 500X. Yeah, so let's go and get it and see if we can get it to actually start from the jump pack. Right, yeah, it, um, it didn't start at all. Literally not an ounce of power left in it. Um, I had an old smaller battery for a non-stop start car, which the battery tester says replaced. It's got 43% life. I've had it on charge today for three hours maybe. Put that in roared into life so I've moved it where I wanted to put it now and I've now got the battery down here on charge as you can see brand spanking new one um, being charged up by the knocko um, we'll leave that overnight um, yeah I, 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 it's got to be that parasitic drain isn't it I imagine we'll see how that one goes if that one drains down in a couple of days it seemed to take longer than that as I say because it was up it was up there for quite getting on for a fortnight and now it literally completely drained. You open the door, no lights come on, nothing, literally nothing at all. And for the knocko, for not sorry, not for the knocko, for the, the top don um, booster to not start it either, it's got to be really, really bad. Um, but we'll see how that one fares. Um, obviously, we, when we get onto that car, possibly Friday we'll get back on it. If not, it'll be next week. Um, but um, we'll get, there's not that much to do on it. So I'll see you next week or the end of this week, whenever it is on that, uh, and we'll carry on. 
Right, so the car has been sitting out on the road for oh, a good couple of weeks. And what you just saw was the last stuff that I recorded on it. It's been literally been sitting out there ever since. Um, at the moment, we're trying to get this one finished. The bath's been finished, as you know now, if you're a regular viewer. And we're trying to get this one finished because this is going for MOT next week. Uh, but just thought we'd uh, get this one down the drive, let it run for a little bit, uh, and just tell you a bit about what's going on with this car. So, as you know, let me just take you into the car and show you. In fact, we'll, we'll sit in the car for a second. But let me show you inside the car. We will get in. Now, I haven't run diagnostics on this car at all yet. But as you can see, the mileage is flashing. Which, of course, usually tells us that the blue and me's knackered. Uh, so if we, let's turn this, we're just going to turn the stereo on. I'm going to pause you just a sec, just in case music starts, bear with me. We've got adverts at the moment, so that's fine, but I've turned the volume down anyway. So, of course, as I said, you normally need, normally means the uh, blue and me's working, uh, not working. So if we press the button on the steering wheel, which it should activate the blue and me, as you can see, we press it and nothing happens. Now that in itself, uh, you know, a proxy alignment might fix it. Um, however, basically what happens is, when you turn the car off, get out of the car, lock the doors, system powers down. Now within, I think it's like a couple of minutes, the body computer will send a signal to all the components to tell them to shut their power down, which they then do, which of course then conserves the battery. So it's basically putting the car into sleep mode, isn't it? When that signal is sent out to the ECUs, those ECUs then shut, shut everything down. The Blue and Me does not receive that signal because that part of the Blue and Me unit is kaput. So therefore, the Blue and Me unit is active like it is when you're in the car and the car's running. Therefore, it does seem to vary on how quickly it drains the battery. Uh, anything up to 24 hours and it can completely flatten the battery, completely flatten the battery. Um, I'm, I'm not going to bother to put a, a meter on it or anything like that because I can almost guarantee that's going to be it. So when I move this car later on today, um, I will lock it up and I'll then I'll disconnect the battery for the time being. But what I'm obviously going to do, I'm going to take the Blue and Me unit out. Uh, I'm going to run diagnostics first, which we'll cover in, in the next video. Um, and But I'll take the Blue and Me unit out and we'll probably send it off to get it repaired. Uh, and then put it back. Could change the stereo, but I want to try and keep the costs down on this one and the time, because I do actually have someone physically waiting for this car. And I, as I've mentioned before, I have a list as long as my arm of people who want cars. This has already been promised to a friend of my sister-in-law's, uh, who I must message actually, because I've, I've done, I've already, you've seen me do quite a lot to it already. So there's not an awful lot to do. Um, a lot of it's cleaning, um, sort of blowing me out, uh, service it, cam belt, which I'm going to do. Um, MOT and then it'll be ready to go. Uh, not an awful good, really good clean. It needs a good clean inside and outside. Um, it's going to probably need an iron, iron contamination, decontamination as well, and, and a good old polish. But uh, yeah, not a massive amount to do on it. Um, but I just wanted to explain that to you. So if you didn't know, that's that's uh, that's what happens with a blue me. So um, yeah, the deep joy of getting that out. Um, I, I hate I hate doing that job. It's a you have to dismantle so much of the interior of the car just to get to the damn thing. Uh, but yeah, crappy system, it's been around for a while, it's a known fault, happens to a lot of people, say la vie, it's one of those things unfortunately. So that costs, uh, including the return postage, it costs £98, so it's £78. Now why the bloke, I, I'm never quite sure why the bloke charges £20 to, uh, sorry £93 I think it is. Um, why the bloke charges so much for return postage when he uses your own packaging that you send it to. And he, well, he does send it by special delivery, which probably costs five pounds something, but yeah, he charges far too much for the, for delivery, but hey ho. So the way that works is uh, you send him a picture of the, of the barcode so you can see the model number and so on. Uh, ask him if that's one that he can potentially fix uh, and he will say yes. Uh, you then send that off to him. Uh, he will test it to make sure he can fix it. Uh, once he's fixed it, uh, if, he, if he doesn't fix it, if he can't fix it, obviously there's no charge um you haven't you haven't passed any money off off over at this point uh if he fixes it or he can fix it uh he will then send you an invoice uh you pay that invoice um bank transfer i think it was yeah i think it was yeah it was bank transfer um he then and you basically get a couple of days later you get it back in the post and it's done 
So it's quick. It's a quick turnaround, and you don't have to fork out any money because if you can't fix it, you don't charge you anything, which is which is good. But it's just the return postage is a bit uh, extortionate. But there you go. Uh, so yeah, ninety three pounds, including the return postage plus whatever it costs you to post it to him, which I usually send it by uh, by every. Take a chance that it doesn't get lost, um, which is what about three quid. So it's about 95, 96 pounds in total to get your own one. And I think, to be honest, that's probably the best way because it solves any compatibility issues. Um, it, I've, not, I've not had one yet, touch wood, that hasn't been able to be repaired because it tends to be the same thing. Anyway, I've waffled on enough for the back of the blue and me. We're going to do a little bit to this car today. We are flitting between this and the convertible because, as I said, the convertible is um, MOT next week. So um, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do to this today, but we'll come back and we'll get on with it. And uh, yeah, see you soon. Right, when we were on this last and we were doing the, uh, the air conditioning on this, the pipes, if you remember, I suggested that this pipe was too high. If you look down, if we get down here, we can see the top of it here is coming above the tip of the airbox. It just seemed, looking at it, it just seemed too high. It doesn't bang into the bonnet or anything like that, but it, it just looks too high. Um, and I couldn't really figure out why, and I wasn't really sure. Um, so what I thought we'd do, as soon as we got the convertible here, which I had forgotten at the time actually had air conditioning, because when we were doing that, I don't think we got this back. As you can see, it's much lower. If we go down here, you can see it's really down low. There's been no, it's about level with the, 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 top of the, the bottom of the uh, filler bottle neck. And it's probably two inches above the top of the uh, cam cover, cam belt cover. So I'm not quite sure why. It's, I, I imagine it's probably where it's connected down here. So if we look here, so it's quite a way up. Actually, no, it's just above the bend. So I reckon it's probably clipped in too high. That's probably all it is. It's just above the bend. Ah, ah, too, that's why. Because we've actually got the other aircon pipe clipped in there. So, the, so that is this pipe that should be clipped in there, not that one. So where? Let's go back to this car again. Does that one not clipped in at all? This is a good thing about having two cars at the same. So if we look down there, oh no, it doesn't. That one's not clipped in. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, now this, I wonder if these pipes do differ, you know. Where does that one run? That one just sort of runs behind the headlight. Oh no, so does that one. Yeah, so that one's not clipped in there. It just, it's further over. And it's that one that's clipped in. So hopefully we can just swap those around, swap the, the channels around and it'll be, that'll be all right. Let's just do that. That's better. <laughs> that's all it was. That's now in the right place. That's good. It just looked odd. I knew it was wrong. That's it. Much better. Right. That's that job done. I'm not sure if I've shown you, but we have got a new bumper for the car. Uh, it, it, it's a complete bumper. It's got DRLs, everything in it. Because as we know, this is just a temporary bumper on this one. Because um, I did feel, when you look at it, Again, I'm not sure whether I've shown you it. Is uh, this side seems a bit high. It's like the front panel is a little bit higher this side. And I've just noticed that that is um, below. So obviously that should be on top of there, not underneath. So that might be all it is, because there was a gap between, between here and the headlight. But I think the tip of that headlight is probably too low. That's probably why, so it's probably not the, anything to do with the front panel. So when we get that bumper off later and put the new one on, actually that might not be till tomorrow because um, what I've got to do is there are a couple of little paint bits that need to be done on it and I thought I might as well do those off the car before I put it on whilst we've got this bumper on which is obviously fine as it is uh, as a temporary bumper even though we know it's damaged um, but it's handy to keep this I was going to try and repair it and I might still do that uh, but at the moment like I've used it on this car it's handy to keep as a temporary bumper we've got all the lights and we don't even take the lights out but we've got everything on it so it can go on as temporary bumpers whilst I'm waiting for a good bumper so it's, i think it's probably worth keeping um so we'll, we'll get that painted well, i'll show you once i get it all unpacked we'll do that we'll swap them over we'll adjust that headlight and then that should be the front all sorted out then uh, a few days have passed since we did that uh, and i was i had intended to add more to it 
um, i.e. putting the bumper on, but when, after putting the video together, I realised that um, the video was getting a bit long, so I thought I'd better end it here. Uh, today is actually Saturday, it's about eight o'clock Saturday evening. <laughs> I'm getting soaked here, it's pouring with rain. Um, and um, uh, video needs to be up for nine o'clock in the morning. This rain is really cold. Um, so I'm gonna finish here. Um, some of the stuff you'll see in the video, you would have already known, that, <laughs> getting so wet, that it's already happened. Um, I.e. finishing the old bath um, and the, the convertible roof and so on and so forth. MOT on the convertible on Monday, wish me luck. Um, so that's it, I'm gonna finish here before I get absolutely soaked through to the skin. So as always, thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you're not a subscriber, click on the button, subscribe to the channel, give us a thumbs up. <laughs> until next week uh, until then we'll see you then so take care stay safe stay dry and we'll see you then